In this example, we're going to be looking at creating a cash budget. To do that, we're going to have to firstly work out the cash receipts and then work out the cash payments that have been made um, in the three months, January to March. To begin with, we'll just have a look at the information provided, which is all on the screen. We've got a whole range of information from the credit sales that they make, the purchases of raw materials, manufacturing overhead, overhead, um, manufacturing labor, I should say, overhead, which includes a certain amount of depreciation. And it's important to note that depreciation is a non-cash expense. Warehousing and distribution expenses, sales and marketing, administrative expenses, which also includes some depreciation, uh, loan, so there's some principal effects going on there, uh, interest expense, and dividend paid. We have some additional information which is useful to note. So the first is in relation to cash receipts. And that is that these sales are all made on credit and not all the amount is collected straight away. In this case, 50% is collected in the month following the sale, 40% is two months following the sale, and the final 10% is in the third month following the sale. So if you imagine for October, some of this, or 50% to be exact, is collected in November. 40% of this is collected in December. And the final 10% is collected in January. Uh, this does add up to 100%. That's not always going to be the case because in some, t in some cases, uh, you'll have bad debts and they won't be able to collect all the sales that have been made. Purchases 100% in the month following, so all sorry, purchases are paid in the 100% in the month following. So this 120 is all paid in January, that 52 is all paid in February, and so on. A couple of other little pieces of information, which is $2,300 of the March distribution costs will be paid in April. So of this line, some of these costs that have been here will happen in April. So whilst they're being recorded here, there won't be a cash flow effect until later. The final piece of information we've got here, and the reason I've highlighted uh, the March is because I've kept it consistent with what's in, what's in the text, but uh, looking at what's provided, there might've been a small typo in here, but I'll, I'll point out what's happening, is that they're saying that $4,200 of this amount is prepaid for April. Now, what the question and then looking at the solution that's provided, and I'm going to keep it consistent with it, is saying that this amount is included within here and also paid within March. Now that's obviously not possible because that number is smaller than 4,200. But the important thing is because it's being prepaid, it is actually taking place here. So we're just going to take it as read that this amount, the 3,800, includes some portion which is going to be used up in April, but importantly, it has been paid in March. So when we see what we do, you'll see that figure come through. The loan interest will not be paid until April. So whilst it's recorded here, the actual cash flow doesn't happen until later. So first things first, we'll look at credit sales. And you know, there's a couple of different ways you can set this out. But what I'm doing here is noting down the 50% the 40% and the 10%. So for January, they collect 50% of the previous month. So 50% of this figure is collected from December. I should say 50% of December's figure is collected in January. And if we roll that along, 50% of January's sales are collected in February, so the 65,000, and 50% of February sales are collected in March, which is why you get the 55,000. And we follow the same process, but obviously going back now two months. So 40% times November, so 40% of November sales are collected two months time, and the same process holds February to de from December oops, and January to March. And you can see where this is going. It's 10% of 
of one, two, three, October sales, and we roll it through. Once we've done that, we can just start completing the cash budget. So receipts from accounts receivable is the 285.300 and the 214 and the 137. And that is the only cash receipts. So just the same thing. So now turning to the payments and we're gonna do the first set of payments so we can see everything on the screen and then we'll scroll down to do the final ones. So payments to suppliers all get shifted by a month. So anything that was that was purchased in December, for example, gets paid off in January. So payments to suppliers, we're just interested in January, February, March, so equals one month back. So that's the 120, the 52, and the 44. Direct labor is paid in the month that happens. So we just look straight up. So we end up with the 20, the 16,500, and the 15,000. Manufacturing overhead, again, we're not told anything about it. So we assume it happens in the, is paid in the month it happens, but we also need to make sure that we take away the 3,167 uh, depreciation expense. So I am going to do something which you shouldn't do, which is to just actually put a number into the formula. Now it's usually pretty bad practice, because if you have to change the depreciation, for example, or change whatever the formula is, you've got to go through into each cell. Um, but we'll just let that slide for the moment. Warehouse and distribution expenses. So again, we look up. Uh, but there was also a comment that 2,300 of the distribution expenses in March would not be paid until April. So from this, again, being slightly naughty, just taking away 2,300. So we end up with 7,600. Sales and marketing is the same amount all the way through. So five, six, four, nine, three, eight. Um, remember that holding aside the actual number, um, that amount was pre, the amount included in the 3.8 was prepaid, so it has actually been paid for April. So the cash flow does happen here, uh, which is why we've done that. And the very final one, just for the moment, is the administration expenses, which include depreciation. So again, we look up to the 3,750 and just minus 417 in depreciation. And we end up with 3,083 and 2,583. The last two that we have to deal with are loan principal and the dividend paid. So the loan principal just follows what was happening up above. There's nothing really other else commented about that. And the dividend paid, well, the loan interest, I should say, there's, we've skipped past it, is that won't get paid till April. So there's no, no payment for this. And the dividend paid is included of 75,000. So again, because it's a cash budget, we're not worried about if it's, you know, dividends aren't an expense item, um, but it is still cash going out. So we still are worried about it. So now that we've got this done, total cash payments, we just add these up. And we have 157,766, 95,666, and 158,16. So the net cash flow is the cash receipts minus the payments. And so it's a positive cash flow, a positive cash flow, and then a negative cash flow in March. We had a beginning bank balance. So to get the ending balance is just adding those two together. So 238. That becomes the beginning of Feb. And we drag that along and we drag this along. And what we end up with is an ending balance of $343,729 at the end of March. And hopefully that's what you got as well.